Hello everybody, my name is Peter Forshaw. I am an um, Associate Professor in History of Early Modern Esotericism at the University of Amsterdam Centre for History of Hermetic Philosophy and Related Currents, which means basically that I specialise in the history of um, alchemy, magic, Christian Kabbalah, astrology and other subjects, from specialising really from around the 15th century until the middle of the 18th century. My paper for the symposium is on um, my main focus, I have to say, for, for many years now. Um, a 16th century theosopher, um, a physician, uh, an alchemist, uh, a magus interested in natural magic and divine magic, and particularly also in Christian Kabbalah. Um, he, and he's very interested in combining all of these different subjects. So I'm talking about that, I'm focusing on his Amphitheatre of Eternal Wisdom, which is his most well-known book, um, and it's illustrated with a sequence of engravings, or rather sequences of engravings, no one really knows the, the true sequence. Um, one of those in particular is very relevant for the symposium on the greatness of the human mind, because it discusses um, Aristotle's ideas of, of how people gain knowledge, um, but instead of taking it all from the senses, he actually does something very different with it. He Christian Kabbalizes Aristotle, so that you have knowledge coming both from knowledge of the, of the book of nature, of the world through um, analysis in the laboratory, for example, but also knowledge through gnosis, through divine revelation in the oratory. And one of Conrad's engravings, his best known one, is on the oratory and the laboratory, and how these two things have to be combined together. Um, so I'm talking about that, and uh, I hope you find it stimulating. So, um, in the symposium, I'm the first on the list, um, beginning with Heinrich Kunrat, who's 16th century. Um, Kunrat is interesting in the history of um, esotericism, uh, well, particularly for me, I have to say, because he's taken up uh, and supported by Rosicrucians. Or rather, there are two streams of Rosicrucianism. Some really like what he does, others are less enthusiastic. Anyway, um, he's criticised um, by uh, a, fellow, a follower or a friend of Descartes um, and defended by a, a very well-known English occult philosopher called Robert Flood. And pleasingly, Robert Flood is um, the focus of two of the papers at the symposium. So we begin with Henry Kunrat, we have Robert Flood, who's someone who sort of picks up the um, ideas that you find in Kunrat and develops them in his own way. And we also have people discussing Carl Gustav Jung, who develops his psychology and, and uh, his ideas of the greatness of the human mind, heavily influenced, I have to say, by early modern alchemy, or, or rather ancient medieval and early modern alchemical ideas. So there's a, we sort of try and trace threads, we see what people do with information. Kunrat is working in a very physical laboratory, but is using alchemical ideas also to express his spiritual purgation or his hopes for spiritual union with the divine, and Jung is particularly interested in that dimension of him, less in the physical, more in the metaphysical, spiritual, psychological, and that's the sort of thread really that's running through the symposium, this power, potential, possibilities and capabilities of the human mind, human spirit.